A boy is looking at a kite up in the sky, and his dad's with him. And you notice the kite's flying loose, and the dad says to the son, Son, not everything is better wireless. So anyways, that's the best I could do finding a kite joke for our geometry unit today. And what is a kite? Yes, those are the things you flew when you were a child. And we're going to deal with the definition of a kite. Some geometry uh, teachers can actually have different definitions. The one we're going to use matches our textbook, which is a kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Now, one thing we are going to say, we're not going to say all four sides are congruent, just that AB is congruent to AD and BC is congruent to DC. So there you have AB is congruent to AD and BC is congruent to DC. So we're going to prove that uh, a couple of things, that angle B and angle D will be congruent in the kite. See how this is the angle between the non-congruent sides and so is that one. Those two angles will always be congruent. And I'm also going to prove that AC, if I connect those the other two angles with the diagonal, that that will cut the kite in half. It's going to bisect angle BAD and BCD. All right, so uh, first of all, I know that those two sides are congruent. That's given. And I know that AC is definitely, well, I see reflexive property of congruence. That tells me something is congruent to itself. So I better have the same thing on the other side of that congruent sign. Now you'll notice that in my triangles, because I did create two triangles, that this side is congruent to that, and BC is congruent to DC, and AC is congruent to AC. Well, now I've proven that these two triangles, ABC and ADC, are congruent to each other using the side-side-side theorem. I can also tell you that angle B and angle D are congruent because they're corresponding angles of congruent triangles. So corresponding parts are always congruent. That's CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I can also tell you that angle BAC up here is congruent to DAC. Why? Those are two corresponding parts of congruent triangles. This, this piece here corresponds to that piece. And since those two pieces are the same size, that means AC must be cutting this larger angle in half, which means that AC is bisecting BAD by definition of an angle bisector. Now looking at the bottom part of our kite, I could say these two angles are congruent because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And I can also tell you that AC bisects, and that should be BCD, um, by definition of an angle bisector. So why is angle A not congruent to angle C? Well, one other thing I should tell you about kites is they are not parallelograms. All right, they're different from parallelograms, at least according to our textbook. There are some people that will argue they could be parallel. We're not doing that. All right, so why isn't angle A congruent to angle C? Well, if angle A were congruent to angle C, then I would have two pairs of congruent angles. Both the sets of opposite angles would be congruent. But that would make it a parallelogram. And kites have no parallel sides. Therefore, angle A is not congruent to angle C. In this example, we're going to go ahead and find the measure of angle B and the measure of angle D in this kite. I did tell you angle A is 81, angle C is 62. B and D will be congruent because they're between the non-congruent sides. See how they're included between the non-congruent sides. So there, I'll put an X there and there. Since this is a quadrilateral, all the angles have to add up to 360. So that's what I did. Add up all the angles and make them equal to 360. Combine like terms and then subtract the 143 from both sides. And I get 2X equals 217. I can divide both sides by 2, which tells me that x is 108.5 degrees. Therefore, angle B and angle D both measure 108.5 degrees. So for further reflection, how do we know that one of the diagonals definitely bisects the kite? 
Well, remember that we had two sets of congruent sides already, and when we, when we made that diagonal, it's congruent to itself. So that means the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. How do we know only one set of opposite angles is congruent in a kite? Well, if two sets of opposite angles are, were congruent, that would make it a parallelogram, and we'll talk about those more later. And we know that kites are not parallelograms.